Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel again. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the Z shell. So normally when we boot up Archinox, we are using the Bash shell or the Born Again shell, which is standard in our installation. However, you might have noticed when we are installing Archinox, the shell is actually the Z shell. So what is the Z shell? The Z shell is another shell for Linux, which offers many customization options with plugins and themes. So in this tutorial, we are going to install it and configure the base settings with the oh My Z shell framework. And in the next tutorial, we're going to install also the power level 10K theme to customize further the Z shell. So there's a lot to cover, let's get going. So here we go, we are on a KDE desktop here and it's a quite light installation I did some days ago. So let's open up the terminal. And as you can see now, we are in our Bash shell. So before we get started here and changing our shell to the Z shell, let me just clarify a little bit what's the difference between the shell and the terminal. Sometimes they tend to get confused and when we speak about the terminal, we are actually speaking about the shell and vice versa. So the terminal is actually the program where the shell runs in. So in this case, for example, I'm running console, which is the terminal running the Bash shell. So in our console here, we have options where we configure the colors, the cursor, the size of the text, the text font itself, and so on. This is everything belonging to the terminal. Now, the shell is actually the process running inside the terminal. So the commands that we are running inside the terminal, like for example, the list command or the CD command, those commands belong to the shell. The shell is basically what allows us to interact with the system. And the terminal is the window that allows us access to the shell itself. So having that in mind, what we are going to do here is not changing the terminal, it's changing the shell. So meaning the terminal for KDE, in this case console, will be still the same, but what we're gonna change is the shell that runs into the console terminal. So by default, Arch Linux comes installed with Bash, which is the born again shell, and it's one of the most popular shell available. To confirm that we are using Bash here, what we can do is type in which, and then the dollar sign and the shell variable, and then hit enter. And as you can see, we are using here right now the bash shell. Now, in order to use the Z shell, we need to install the packages needed for that. So to do this, because we are in Archinox, of course, we are gonna type in sudo pacman-s, and the first package is Z shell, so Z-S-H, and I'm gonna install also the Z shell-completions. Now, the Z shell package offers us the basic Z shell and the Z shell completion package offers us an additional set of completions for the Z shell itself. It's what we are used to have in a bash shell, like for example, how to complete with the tab key and many other things. So then we can hit enter and we can enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. There you go, the packages are now installed. So to test that the Z shell is installed correctly, what we can do is to type in here Z shell and hit enter. And we are offered here with a new configuration process for new users. So we are here presented with three options. Hitting Q, we will quit and do nothing. And this function will be run again the next time. Typing zero will exit and create an empty Z shell RC file with just a comment. And that means the next time we start Z shell, we will not be presented with this function again. And if we hit the number one, we will just continue to the main menu. So let's hit the number one here. And we have to configure several settings before we can use the Z shell. So first, the number one configure setting for the history, command lines remembered and saved by the shell. So when we hit number one here, we are presented with three options. We can change the number of lines of history kept within the shell. Right now is a thousand and that's fine for me. But if you wanna change this, you can hit the number one and enter a new number. The same goes for this option number two, where we can define where the history is saved. Right now it's in our home directory and the file name is .hist file. So this is fine for me. Again, if you wanna change, you can tap the number two and hit the new file in there if you wish to do so. Same thing goes also for the option number three, which is gonna define the number of lines of history to save into the hist file variable. And again, it's gonna be a thousand by default, and I'm gonna set it as it is. Again, if you wanna change this, you hit the number three and you can change the value as well. So to remember this and to return to the main menu, I can hit zero. 
And as you can see now, it says unsaved changes. The second point is to configure the new completion system. So let's hit the number two. And we have basically three options here. One, to turn on the completion system with default options. Two, to run the configuration tool where we can define which options we want to enable. And the number zero basically will not turn on completion. I'm not going to go too in detail about these completion things because we are going to install in a few seconds the oh my Z shell framework, which will allow us to do much more. So for now, I'm just going to turn on the default options by hitting the number one. And now we can take care of the third point, which is configuring how the keys behave when editing command lines. So let's hit the number three. And as you can see here, it says the keys in the shell line editor can be behaved either like Emacs or like V, which are two common Unix editors. If you have no experience of either, Emacs is recommended. If you don't pick one, the shell will try to guess based on the editor environment variable. Usually it's better to pick one explicitly. So by default, Emacs is selected. In my case though, I wanna change this to V. So to do this, I'm gonna hit the number one and change the key by hitting the V key. And as you can see now, the bind key is now to the V, and this is exactly what I want. Now, to remember this edits and return to the main menu, I hit number zero. And the last option we can set is the number four to pick some of the more common shell options. So let's hit the number four here. And we have, for example, change directory given just path. Though we can change the value for this when we hit the number one. And I will leave those as they are right now. I don't need to change them. So I will just hit zero here to accept this. And now we have the choice whether to exit and save the settings by hitting zero, abort everything by hitting A, and with the Q we quit and do nothing else. And this function will be run again the next time. So I wanna exit and save the settings, so I'm just gonna hit zero here. And now we are in our Z shell. Let me now the terminal. And this is the standard Z shell prompt. Now, before we continue, let me pull up here the Chromium browser, because I prepared already the Z shell arch wiki. Now, let me scroll down here. Here we have the packages that we just installed, and we just run through this command here for first-time users, which we just did. And moving down the lines here, we have the paragraph on how we can configure the Z shell. As the ArchWiki mentions here, although the Z shell is usable out of the box, it is almost certainly not set up the way most users would like to use it. But due to the sheer amount of customization available in Z shell, configuring Z shell can be daunting and time-consuming experience. So what basically the wiki recommends here is to configure at least some basic things. For example, here we have a simple configuration file, which we actually have already because we went through the configuration for new users. So if you go back to the terminal here and type in ls-a and hit enter, you can see here we have our zshellrc file. And when we edit this with vim.zshellrc and hit enter, you can see the commands that we have already available to us. So the auto load comp init and the comp init command are about the completions that we just run. And we have here the history values we selected during the setup, as well as the bind key for the V editor. So this is a very basic configuration file and that's what the ArchWiki is recommending. Now let me exit this file here and minimize the shell. Now let's scroll down here and we have something about command completion, which we have already configured because we went through the configuration tool. And what's most important here, if you want to configure the key bindings, we will have to do it manually. And as it says here in the wiki, the Z shell does not use read line. Instead, it uses its own and more powerful Z shell line editor or ZLE. And it does not read the input RC or the dot input RC files. So in order to configure the key bindings here, they actually give a suggestion on how we can enter them into the Z shell RC file. So if you want, you can go ahead and copy this code and paste it into the Z shell RC file, and you will have the key bindings working for you. For example, by hitting the home key, the cursor will go at the beginning of the line, with the end key is gonna go at the end of the line and so on. These by default are not configured and you need to configure them manually. The same goes for the history search and also the prompts. So by default, the Z shall come already with some prompts pre-installed. Before we can use this prompt though, we need to put in our configuration file these two lines. So let's do this very quickly. Let me pull up here the terminal again. And I'll pull up the last command with the up arrow and hit enter. And I could go down at the end of the file here and I will insert a new line and the comment here is going to be prompt Z shell. 
and the command here is going to be auto load dash u z and then prompt init and the command itself is going to be prompt init now we can save the file and exit vim and we can reload the configuration file by typing in source dot z shell rc and hit enter and let's type in now prompt dash l and hit enter and right now we can see the list of available prompts available to us so we see just the names here and we can preview one for example let's select this fire prompt by typing in here prompt fire and hit enter and this is going to give us the fire prompt we can also preview the prompts by typing in prompt dash p and if you want to define your prompt in the configuration file you will have to type prompt and then the name of the prompt in the zshellrc file that we edited before now these are very basic settings that you can configure yourself and they're going to give you basic commands for the zshell but we can configure the zshell also to work differently and that is by adding what is called the oh my zshell framework it's one of the frameworks available for the zshell and it allows us to have much more functionality built into the zshell with themes and plugins now the advantage of using the framework is of course as i just said the customization possibilities are really many we have thousands of plugins available for the zshell as well as themes but it does use a little bit more resources of your system. So if you prefer to have a lean Z shell, then you rather want to configure this manually by following the Arch Wiki and the Z shell wikis. But on the other side, if you want to have more customization available to you and you don't mind a little bit more usage of the resources of your computer, you can install the Oh My Z shell framework, which will allow us to have much more things available for the shell itself. So let me clean up the terminal. So how do we install actually this framework? We have two options. We can install it from the Arch main repository, we can install it from the Arch user repository, or we can install it directly from GitHub. Now, this is really up to you, but I've tried all these scenarios, and the one I actually prefer is to install it from GitHub directly, because I can profit from the old functionality of the framework itself, or else if you install from the Arch user repository or the Arch main repository, some of the functionality might not be available. So to install the framework directly from GitHub, we need to first make sure that we have some package installed in our system. We can install the framework with CURL or with wget. So we need to make sure that at least one of these is installed. And we need to make sure also that git is installed. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. I'm going to check for CURL and then git and then wget. And hit enter. Enter my sudo password. And as you can see, I have already all three of them installed in my system. So I don't need to install anything here and I can hit N for no. If you don't, just go ahead and hit enter for accepting the installation and you'll have the packages installed. Now, in my case, I'm going to use wget to install the framework. So to do this, I can type in sh and then dash c, the double quotes and then the dollar sign, opening parenthesis and then wget and then dash capital O dash and then https colon slash slash then raw dot github user content dot com slash o my z shell and then again slash o my z shell slash master slash tools slash install dot sh then closing parenthesis and closing the double quotes and then we can hit enter now, this is going to download and install the framework itself. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. And as you can see here, it says that it's looking for an existing configuration file of the Z shell. It's difficult to read because it's blue. Actually, let me change the colors here so that you can see better. I'm going to choose Solarized, which is easier to read. And hit OK. There you go. So what happens here is that it found actually the Z shell configuration file and it's now backed up and it's called Z shell RC pre oh my Z shell. So we have basically a pre installation of oh my Z shell, their configuration for the Z shell, and we have the new Z shell configuration file with the new framework. The second thing here is that it's asking us whether to change the default shell to ZSH. In my case, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to type in Y and hit enter. Enter the password and hit enter. And now the shell is changed for this user. And as you can see here, it says shell successfully changed to user being ZSH. 
Now here we see the new prompt for the Z shell because we have the new framework installed. So let's clean up the terminal. Now this is a framework and it's a package that is installed in the system. So if you install this from the AUR or the main repository, as I said before, you will lose some of the functionality. But if you prefer that way, you can definitely do that. And I will leave a link to the packages in the video description below. However, if you install for GitHub and you want to actually update the framework, there is a command already embedded in the framework itself, which will not work, of course, if you're using the Arch repository. So to upgrade the framework from time to time, you can type in upgrade underscore o underscore my underscore zsh and hit enter. Now it's going to check for updates. And as you can see, it says, oh, my Z shell has been updated or it is at the current version. So this is done and we can proceed. So now the framework is installed. Let's see what happened in our home directory. Let's type in ls a and hit enter. So you can see here we have the pre oh, my Z shell framework installation configuration file, which we saw before. And we have the new configuration file for the Z shell, which was created by the framework. We do actually have also a new directory called oh my Z shell. This is the directory where we will find our plugins and the themes for our Z shell. So let's have a look first at this file, which is the configuration file for the Z shell before we install the framework. So let's type in vim dot Z shell RC dot and then tab to autocomplete and hit enter. And as you can see, this is the file I was using before where we installed the Z shell from scratch. So we have here our prompt in it. We have here our comp in it. Everything is there as it was. And let's exit from here. And now let's check the new configuration file by typing in vim dot Z shell RC and hit enter. And this one looks very different because it's the configuration file of the framework itself. Now, there are many things we configure in here, but the main two things we are going to focus on in this tutorial is the theme for Z shell. And scrolling down here, we will also focus on the plugins. So let me get out of this file here first. And let's have a look at the oh my Z shell directory, which was created when we installed the framework. So let's type in CD and then dot or my Z shell, any tenter. Let's type in ls, any tenter. And we have several files in here, but the two directories we want to focus today is the plugins directory and the themes directory. Now let's go ahead and check the themes directory. So let's type in cd and then themes, any tenter. I will type in ls and then I'll pipe this to the less command to see the themes in chunks, any tenter. And as you can see, these are all the themes already installed in your system when we installed the framework. Now, I will leave a link to the video description below with a preview to all of these so that you can visually see them before you can decide on the one that you want to use. In my case, I want to use a specific one, which is called GNZH. So let me get out of this file by hitting Q. And I'll go back to the home directory and type it in here vim.zshellrc and hit enter. And what I have to do here, we go to the Z shell theme and change the name between the double quotes. Now let's enter insert mode in BIM and replace the name here with GNZH. Then we can save the file and exit BIM. We can reload the configuration file by typing in source.zshellrc and hit enter. And here we have our new theme, including the new login prompt. So let's clean up the terminal and let's go back to the oh my Z shell directory by typing in CD dot oh my Z shell and hit enter. And you can see also how the login prompt looked now. It's a little bit different than before. This is a new theme. So let's type in LS and hit enter. And this time let's go into the plugins directory. So let's type in CD and then plugins and hit enter. Type in again ls and then the pipe symbol and the less command and hit enter. And these are all the plugins that are already installed by default when we install the oh my Z shell framework. So there are many of these. And again, I will leave a link to these in the video description below so that you can explore them and see the ones that interest to you. The one that I want to actually enable right now in my installation is the Arch Linux plugin because we are in Arch Linux. So to enable a plugin, let's get out of this file first and go back to the home directory and type in again vim 
dot z shell rc and hit enter and we scroll down until we find the plugins group which is right here right now we have only one plugin active in the system which is git so to add another plugin we just click here and we can go to insert mode and add the plugin we want so in our case i want to add arch linux and make sure that the closing parenthesis is there then we can save the file and exit vim we need to reload the configuration file so again source dot z shell rc and hit enter so what is the arch linux plugin do it basically helps us with many different maintenance tasks like for example checking for updates or checking for updates also from the AUR and so on. I will leave, of course, a link to this also in the video description below. But to just show you an example, normally in Arch Linux, as you may already know, to check for updates, you would type in right now sudo pacman syyu and hit enter. You will be asked by the sudo password and then the packages will be checked. But with this plugin, we don't need to do this. We can just type in upgrade and hit enter which is going to interpret the sudo pacman syyu command. Then we can enter our password and hit enter, and it's going to check for updates. Now here there is nothing to do, but I don't need to type basically the full command. I just need to type upgrade and the command is going to take care of the packages for me. Now, there are many other shortcuts or aliases that we can use with the Arch Linux plugin, and you can explore them in the video description below where I will leave a link to it. Now let's clean up the terminal and proceed by actually installing a plugin that is not already available in the framework. As I said before, there are thousands of plugins that you can install in the Z shell, but some of these I would definitely recommend you to install because they will make your work in the Z shell much easier. The first one is the syntax highlighting. So we can install this from GitHub again. And to do this, we're going to use the git clone command. So let's type in git clone and then https colon slash slash and then github.com slash zsh dash users slash zsh dash syntax dash highlighting dot git and what I want to do, I want to actually clone this into a custom plugins directory. So I don't want to actually download it into the plugins directory, which is already existing, because this is a plugin that I downloaded extra from another repository. So to do this, I'm going to type in the dollar sign and the curly brace, and then zsh underscore custom, and then a colon dash, then the tilde character slash dot o dash my dash zsh slash custom, and then close the curly brace slash plugins slash zsh dash syntax dash highlighting and then we can hit enter it's going to take a moment to do that there you go as you can see here it says cloning into this directory so it's my home directory into the oh my z shell directory which was created by the framework the custom directory and a new plugins directory with the new plugin now, to activate this plugin, we need to go back into the configuration file. So let's do this by typing in vim.zshellrc and hit enter. And we are already there at the plugins, so we can hit insert mode here and enter the new plugin by typing in zsh-syntax-highlighting. Now, we can save the file and exit vim, and we can reload the configuration file, so source dot z shell rc and hit enter and let's see what happens now if i type in sudo so you can see by typing in the first letter it's red because it's interpreted as an error as soon as i type in a udo it tells me that it's a correct command now let's do the same for pacman so let's type in pac again it doesn't recognize it as a command so man and that's correct and then dash s and then you can type the rest of your command. If you want to use this with the Arch Linux plugin that we just installed, we can type in, for example, up. Again, this is considered as an error, but if we type in upgrade, it's fine, and we can proceed by upgrading our packages. So let's check, for example, another thing. Let's type in cd. Now the cd command is recognized correctly. And then slash etsy. If I type in the tab key, it's going to autocomplete with the next slash. 
And I want to type in now default, but I make a mistake. Let's say that I make a typo. So as long as I'm typing in the correct letters, you can see the underline there, meaning I am on the correct path. But if I type in a letter which has nothing to do with this directory, like an A, for example, you can see the line disappears. So that means this is wrong. So let's type in F and hit enter here. And now we are in our directory. So this is how syntax highlighting can help you avoiding mistakes by typing in a terminal. Now, another plugin that I definitely suggest you to install is the auto suggestion for the Z shell. It can be addictive when you're getting used to it, but it's a great plugin which will save you a lot of time. So to install it, we use the same process we did before. So let's type in git clone and then https colon slash slash and then github.com slash zsh dash users slash zsh dash auto suggestions dot git and then we're going to use the same process for creating the directory so let's type in the dollar sign the curly brace and then zsh underscore custom colon dash tilde character slash dot o slash my slash zsh slash custom closing curly brace and then slash plugins slash the directory you want to create is zsh dash auto suggestions and then we can hit enter. Again, it's gonna take a moment to do that. There you go. Now we need to enable this plugin again by going back into the configuration file. So let's type in vim z shell rc and hit enter. And we enter insert mode here and the new plugin is gonna be zsh dash auto suggestions. Now we can save the file and exit vim and we need to reload the configuration file. So let's type in source dot z shell rc and hit enter so let's clean up the terminal now let's try it out and let's try to type again our sudo pacman command so let's type in su you can see there is nothing appears here and that's because of the terminal theme so let me change this very quickly go to edit current profile appearance and i'll go back to breeze and as you can see the suggestion here appears correctly that's because the color on the previous terminal theme was not displaying correctly so let me hit ok here and what we can do here is to hit the right arrow and we can complete the command and hit enter. Now, the same goes, of course, for the upgrade command that we ran before. So if you type in upgrade, you can see it appears there. So by hitting the right arrow and hit enter, again, we are going to be asked for the same thing. So let's exit from here. And it's going to be the same, for example, if we're going to go to our default directory that we tried before. So let's type in CD and then slash Etsy. And you can see the autocomplete feature is already telling us where we would like to go, probably. So I'll hit the right arrow key and hit enter. And we are in our default directory. So let's go back to our home directory. And so these are the two basic plugins that I recommend you to install. Again, as I said before, there are many, many plugins that you can install. Although be aware that installing a lot of plugins might slow down the shell itself, especially when it starts up. Let me go back shortly here to the configuration file. And you can see here it says the standard plugins can be found in the plugins directory that we saw before. And the custom plugins will be added into the custom directory plugins, which is the directory we installed the two custom plugins. This is how the plugins are going to be entered in the system. This is what we have here. And add wisely as too many plugins slow down the shell startup. So keep in mind this and choose your plugins carefully. Now, this is going to do it for this basic installation of the Z shell. In the next tutorial, we are going to customize this a little further by installing the power level 10K theme with more customization options. Again, keep in mind, this is very personal choice. There is no right or wrong here. If you want to go with the lean Z shell installation, you can follow the arch wiki by configuring the minimal things. And if you want to customize it, you can install the oh my Z shell framework. And following the next video, we could install also the Power Level 10K theme, which allows us to customize the shell even further. So this is the basic configuration for the Z shell with the Oh My Z shell framework. I encourage you to try it out. And if you do, please let me know in the comments below what you think about it and how you like it. And in the next video, as I said before, we are going to customize further the Z shell with the Power Level 10K theme. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please click the like button below and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can visit our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you soon in the next one.